Hi guys, today we are looking at the body part of an essay. So specifically we are looking at a compare and contrast essay. Probably in English or Hass classes you might have also written persuasive essays or informative essays, but this is a compare and contrast. So we're looking at similarities and differences, and particularly for this unit of work, we're looking at similarities and differences between medieval Europe and feudal Japan. So this will actually be a summative, uh, so an important assessment task that you will do later. So just a bit of revision. Uh, there are three main components to an essay, as you can see here. There's an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. We looked at introductions and conclusions last week. Uh, I remember someone telling me in the introduction you tell people what you're going to talk about in the essay. And at your age and stage of life you can anticipate that that should roughly be a paragraph in length. So you need to introduce your essay, introduce the things that you'll be discussing. So let's say you choose three points, uh, you'll need to talk about those three points in not much detail at all. You don't want to go into detail uh, at this point in time and then use a concluding sentence to finish off. The body, what we're focusing on today, uh, again at your age and stage, you can assume that that's about three paragraphs or at least three focus areas. So paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, each on separate and distinct topics. So we'll get to that later. Uh, if I said the introduction was, you know, focus on telling us what you were going to talk about in the essay, in the body you were talking about it. Um, through those three paragraphs or topic points. And finally, there's the conclusion. Again, just one paragraph in length uh, at this stage for you as grade H students. You know, if the introduction is tell us what you're going to talk about, if the body is talk about it, the conclusion is tell us what you talked about. But as it's only a paragraph in length, you don't add any new information. You simply summarize the points you've discussed and um, draw any final conclusions at the end. As an example, I've tried to give you a very, very basic way of doing it. With essay writing, uh, there are a couple of black and white rules, so key rules that you always need to stick to, i.e. there's always got to be an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Um, different people, depending on who you talk to, will have different thoughts about how you write each of those components and other things you need to include or that aren't important. So this is just a very basic example to give you an idea to start off with. If I want to do a compare and contrast essay between medieval Europe and feudal Japan, my introduction might look something like this. Um, in one paragraph I've written medieval Europe, so you can see here, and feudal Japan are two fascinating eras to compare and contrast. Whilst there are some interesting similarities that transcend culture, uh, so that means it doesn't matter if you're from Japan or Europe, there are some things that are the same, there are noticeable unique differences. This essay will examine the role and values of knights and samurai, including the honour codes of chivalry and bushido, Shintoism and Christianity, and the role of peasants in Japan and Europe under the feudal system. So to make it easy here, in my introduction, I've told people what I'm going to talk about, and my compare and contrast subjects are highlighted in three different colors. So there's the role and values of knights and samurai, so looking at the warrior class, religion, Shintoism and Christianity, and I can probably add in there, uh, sorry, Buddhism, there we go, and the role of peasants in Japan and Europe under the feudal system. So I've got three distinct uh, clear topics that I'm going to discuss. I'm going to look at both the similarities and the differences in each because this is a compare and contrast essay. So in my body, I'm going to talk about what I've mentioned in my introduction in great detail. Uh, here I can see I've put it all in red so it matches you know, the topic that I've mentioned in the introduction in red also. So about the warrior class, about the knights and the samurai. Paragraph one, my lead in or my topic sentence is this. In medieval Europe and feudal Japan, the role of a trained, paid professional warrior was crucial. 
And then I've started talking about the similarities. Both knights and samurai were employed by a noble slash daimyo as soldiers. Both had an honor code that they swore to live by. For knights, this was known as chivalry, and for the samurai, it was called bushido, the way of the warrior. Knights and samurai wore armor in battle and trained relentlessly to master the art of combat and to excel in everything they put their hand to. Despite these similarities, there are noticeable differences. So I've started off with a couple of similarities. I could have written a lot more, but I think for your age, this is quite acceptable. Uh, despite these similarities, there are noticeable differences. Knights in Europe who surrendered after being defeated in battle could assume they would be treated reasonably well and expect that their friends' allies would pay money slash a ransom to set them free again at a later date. In contrast, samurai considered defeat in battle to be shameful and dishonorable and, as part of their values, would take their own life in a ceremony called seppuku. Samurai carried swords as a status symbol and had the right on the spot I should put that in commas to take the life of a peasant they considered to be doing the wrong thing whereas technically in medieval Europe there would still be some sort of justice system and potentially a court hearing this demonstrates that both civilizations so this is like my concluding sentence here this demonstrates that both civilizations valued the role of a trained warrior, and while there are many similarities between knight and samurai, there are also very clear, distinct contrasts between the two. Okay, is it a perfect paragraph? No, it's not. Um, is it something pitched at your level? I hope so. You can see I've got, you know, a lead in a topic sentence, if you like. I've started off looking at a couple of similarities that I could think of off the top of my head, and then I have discussed some uh, differences as well. Uh, finally, I have finished with like a concluding sentence, which is this last one, uh, linking back to my main point. So again, we're trying to follow that peel paragraph example. Make your point, so that's my point. Okay, the explanation and the evidence, right? And the evidence really to do an essay well would be information that you source um, from an external source, you know, a primary source or a secondary source. This is where you reference other authors, articles, books. Um, really, I've just given an explanation here. There's, uh, you know, I haven't showed that I've sourced this information from anywhere else, but yeah, point evidence explanation link or point explanation evidence link whichever way you want to look at it so they're linking back all right paragraph two so you can see my introduction in blue shintoism slash buddhism and christianity so we're talking about religion here i'm just showing you how i'd plan out to write my paragraph um, if i look at shintoism buddhism i've jotted down the principles thoughts on the afterlife love of nature temple shrines monks uh, japan being very closed off to christianity under the shoguns in fact they severely persecuted japanese christians and missionaries um, emperor was seen as a god festivals were really important for Christianity in medieval Europe, the Catholic Church was dominant, you know, it played a huge role. The Pope's the head of the church and effectively controlled kings. Dealing with heretics was pretty vicious, just like the Japanese persecuted Christians. So heretics being people that aren't Christian. Uh, thoughts on the afterlife, churches and monasteries, religious fe festivals. From that, I would find things that are similar. So festivals are similar. Uh, both civilizations have buildings where they celebrate uh, and practice their religion so churches monasteries or uh, temples and shrines but then i'd look for the things that are contrasting the things that are different so uh, the thoughts on the afterlife would be different the principles would be different uh, you know things like that so you know plan it out write it down using that pill structure para three looking at peasants again i've started to make notes um but uh, yeah, I think you get the idea. Look guys, I've probably run a bit over time. Hopefully that really helps you. Uh, we're re we've revised about an introduction. Today we've looked at the body. We're trying to follow the pill paragraph structure, making sure we have you know a point uh, as our topic or lead sentence. And then the link back is our concluding sentence. And in the middle, we've got evidence and an explanation or explanation and then evidence to back that up. 
um, we're looking at similarities first and then differences after whatever order you do that in is fine um, but yeah I hope that helps introduction body in conclusion as discussed last week all right guys all the best if you have any questions reach out to your teachers otherwise get planning get writing unpack your thoughts and start building the body of your essay okay cheers